Hi, everybody, and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're excited to have a, a guest return, and um, artist entrepreneur Jennifer Goff is with us today. There's been a lot of exciting things happening lately with Mind's Eye Studio and some of the art that she's producing. So we asked Jennifer to come back and share with us. Jennifer is very high in our viewership, and I think it's a lot of artists who are looking uh, to follow the example that Jennifer gives us in terms of how do you create and create a business at the same time. So that's, I think, been really important to our viewership. So thank you, Jennifer, and thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me, Alan. Oh, great. So you were mentioned in Forbes magazine, and I'm, I'm just wondering, how did that feel? That was amazing. That was such a such a great boost, you mm -hmm. know, when uh, you're working really hard and you're trying to achieve goals and, you know, you and to get recognition like that is uh, is really, really feels good. And well deserved. I think uh, the author of the story uh, is actually doing a series on art and business. Mm -hmm. And so you were one of 14, 20 people across North America, even including Europe, that he thought was doing a good job in not just promoting yourself, but creating interesting new. Um, what would you call your work? It's abstract contemporary? Yep, I usually tell people abstract contemporary and mixed media. You know, we spoke about Twitter mm -hmm. and uh, last time I was on and uh, how opportunities can come through there. And the, the Forbes article came to me through a contact that I know through Twitter. Okay. And Jason Borbe is a very well-known, very, um, he's an excellent artist. He's a wonderful businessman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he writes for Forbes. And so we were connected through Twitter, and uh, he approached me to be one of 21 contemporary artist studios uh, that he was featuring in his, in his article. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons you were in the Forbes article was because of your ability to combine the art and the business. And, I mean, you quit a career and said, I'm stopping this and I'm becoming an artist. I mean, it was like a Saturday and by Monday morning you were an artist. That's the kind of person I am. <laughs> I like once I make a decision on something, I, I usually just go 100% full force ahead. Mm -hmm. And the only way that I could see success as an artist um, was to quit my job and fully immerse myself into that into that world. And, um, you know, it ended up being the best thing I could have done, the best choice I could have made. So you've got this mention in Forbes, mm -hmm. which is great. So that's, that's nice recognition. You've also got some exciting things happening. You've just done a recent uh, installation mm -hmm. at uh, the museum here in the Waterloo region mm -hmm. uh, where they have brought a touring show called Getting Naked, mm -hmm. which is uh, some works from the National Gallery of Canada that don't get shown very often. Well, first of all, to give a little bit of background about Getting Naked, um, it is a collection of over 100 works from um, well-known artists, Canadian artists, and uh, that never get seen. Mm -hmm. So it's from, uh, I believe, the Royal Canadian Bank of Art, and they rent out pieces of artwork. So these artworks um, all have all have nudity in them, and very rarely are those ones chosen to be right. rented. So what the museum wanted to do was sort of um, put those on display in a collective and sort of ask the question, why are we so uncomfortable with nudity? Why are we, um, you know, why do we not want to see these pieces. So when uh, Marskell, David Marskell of the museum, came to me and uh, asked me if I'd like to do a commission piece for the exhibit, I was really excited because, um, as you know, I do painting for the most part, right. but I've recently been getting interested in installation work. So I wanted to do something a little bit out of the box, a little bit different for me, and um, I decided to do a peep show. Yes. So when you go up the stairs to go to the exhibit, mine is the first one that you right. see. And so there's little holes, and you peep through the little holes, and behind that, the uh, film is playing. And so it's done, I called it um, Alien in Our Own Skin, to sort of represent yes. um, how comfortable or uncomfortable we may be, even in our own skin being naked. And to um, juxtapose the idea of 
nudity or nakedness and sexuality as well. Good you point. know, because just being naked, just the act of being naked doesn't necessarily have to be sexual, but we equate the two very often. And I think that's part of the reason that we're uncomfortable with nudity is because we equate sexuality with right. that. And what it is, is um, three models removing their clothing. And you can see um, through their movements how comfortable they are or how uncomfortable they are or you know, just you get an intimate view of mm -hmm. how they feel about right. being naked. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was all three of the models um, said to me afterwards that it was a really liberating experience for them right. because they just got to be, you know, once they were naked, then they were just sort of like, okay, I'm just going to feel how this feels and do what comes naturally, right. you know. And um, so that was, that was really a rewarding part of the experience for me to to really understand how they were feeling liberated by mm -hmm. that yeah. you know and um, I haven't publicized this but I'm also one of the models myself so it go. was liberating for me too this year yeah. you know every year I do a theme yes. for um, how I'm going to approach the year and this year uh, my theme was being brave so this is one step towards um, being brave this year mm -hmm. for me to do a piece like that. Wow. I mean, we've spoken before about um, growth, mm -hmm. right? And uh, as an artist, I feel like I'm not moving forward unless I'm pushing boundaries and, and growing as an mm -hmm. artist with my practice and even things that are interesting to me, you know, pursuing different um, mm -hmm. interests. Now, one of my favorite pieces is right over there, mm -hmm. and it's called Spectacle. Yep. And tell us just a little bit about that, because the, the whole thing fascinates me. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, last year's theme was movement. Movement. Right. Yeah. So um, I tried to incorporate that into everything that I did last year into my work, which this is part of a collection that I did um, that carried on that theme uh, with my moving my artwork through the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I showed in New York for the first yes, time last year. Yes, congratulations on that. Thank you very much. So um, a spectacle, uh, if you look at my past work, it's very linear. It has mm -hmm. a lot of straight lines mm -hmm. and it's very uh, symmetrical and uh, a little bit organized chaos, if you will. Okay. Um, I tried to get a little bit away from that last year and, and move more into a flow feeling with my work mm -hmm. and I think that with spectacle it's a very good example of that like that, yeah. When I approach a canvas mm -hmm. uh, usually I have two ways of doing it. I either have a color palette in mind or I have a composition in mind and that's where I start. I have a blank canvas and then I sort of just allow myself to start mm -hmm. somewhere right. And then what happens is the painting actually takes over and tells me what to do. Yes. Yeah. So it's like a collaboration between me and, and the painting. It's very intuitive. Mm -hmm. And when I, and when I'm painting with a theme, such as, you know, movement or mm -hmm. flow, I try to keep that in mind when I'm painting and try to incorporate those movements mm -hmm. into the piece so that it, I can achieve that, mm -hmm. that look at the end. Well, you done good. <laughs> Thank you. That is stunning. I, I just love that piece. So, what's it going to be next? You're, you're doing bravery and courage this year, but it, and you got into film and you did something really extraordinary. Now what? Um, you know, I just want to continue to take risks mm -hmm. with my work, and um, I'm doing a lot of commission pieces right now. Uh, I'm working on some submissions for some bigger projects. Mm -hmm. As far as what's going to happen next. I never know that, mm -hmm. you know, um, opportunities come up intermittently and, sure. and, and, you know, you never know what those things are going to be. But really, as long as I'm moving forward and, and growing as an artist and, and um, you know, continuing my journey, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Absolutely brilliant. Um, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Jennifer, this has been great. And as a viewer, uh, check out Jennifer's uh, website. Uh, her work is on display there and uh, and for sale. Absolutely. Absolutely, of course. Okay, so thanks for joining us today on AQ's Blog and Grill. It's always a pleasure to see Jennifer Goff and talk about her work. So, thanks for tuning in.